Welcome to the 62nd edition of Make Pro Wrestling Majestic Again. I am Tiger Height. And I am Peanut Gallery. And we are talking about everything Money in the Bank and Money in the Bank related. But first, Peanut Gallery. For Hecklin, what are we going to be chatting about? Well, we're going to be chatting about um, the, the I guess, the role that wrestling is now playing, like in terms of how the WWE is is signing people versus how AEW signs people. And the inspiration I got from this was not only the signing of Logan Paul, but also a very interesting uh tweet or or thing that Alex Hammerstone actually said about indie wrestlers. Okay. And what Alex Hammer I don't have a picture of it on here. I couldn't find a good enough one. Um, but what he said essentially was WWE signs someone like Logan Paul. He's got the looks, he's got the act, he's a decent wrestler. And then you have all the indie guys saying, oh, I should just do more flippity flip shit and then I'll be noticed to what? get signed by a big company. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my entire life. But that is, I, I think what he is speaking to is he is speaking to the mentality that independent wrestlers have especially when it comes to being signed by a company that has a national television presence, like the WWE, like AEW, like even even smaller promotions like NWA, like Impact Wrestling, like New Japan Pro Wrestling. There's a, there's a certain mentality that wrestlers, wrestling fans, uh, that uh, wrestling executives are looking for when they're looking for top prospects. And I say Logan Paul is a really good example of the direction that WWE is going because we also recently got WWE's second class of next in line and then, they, and then they did that MMA star, and that totally flops in that you have to do flippy shit mentality. Here is the difference between a person like Logan Paul and these indie wrestlers who are working. Logan Paul is noticed. Mm -hmm. WWE is not a wrestling company. Right. They just happen to do wrestling. And I think this reinforces my point in that WWE is not looking for wrestlers. But they do have wrestlers. It's like, okay, well, what about Gunther? What about um, what about Roman Reigns? Is he doing a bunch of flippy dippy shit? No. No, he's not. For WWE, it's not about if it's you're, not it's about, about flippy dippy shit. Right. It's about no. It's about marketing yourself. It's knowing how to get noticed. Walter knew how to do that. Roman Reigns took this ball and ran with it. Right. Logan Paul did the same thing. But let's talk about that because I think uh, I think well, we're we're kind of going off on a different tangent mm. with re with regards to Walter Gunther. Well, uh, WWE did tell him to imp to improve his presentation. Yes. Um, but I think. But again, I'm trying to highlight the fact that. Even though Vince McMahon is not technically in charge, this, I think, with the signing of Logan Paul, was largely a Stephanie and Triple H yes. vision. This oh, was 100%. their vision to bring Logan Paul in to do multiple shows a year. Right. right. And I think it highlights what WWE's focus is on. And we can contrast this with what AEW is is focusing on with regards to looking for wrestling talent, right? And and doing all of these now, and doing all of you know like like uh, forbidden door stuff, like right. all the stuff they did with NJP. Here's the, like that's their focus, right? right. Let's, Let's talk. talk. You, you did, did bring up one thing that I thought was really interesting is that they signed or um, they announced the next round of the NIL, which yeah. we talked about in a previous episode, and Triple H being back at the helm within NXT. Um, I think this is a net positive overall, and this is where WWE is going, right. is but they don't want indie people. Right. But here's the thing about Triple H going back to NXT. Triple H is not going to turn NXT back to black and gold. He no. is not going to return it to what it was previously. Black and gold is pretty much dead because that is not the direction of the company anymore. Right. They did that before because right. of AEW's impending presence. Yes. But since AEW has been kind of up and down pretty much, kind of hanging out at the one million, WWE doesn't care about that. Right. WWE, um, I think they lost their way 
between uh, 2015 and 2020. Yep. yep. Um, I think that the reason that they brought Nick Khan in was to improve, it was to streamline the image that WWE is trying to present. Right. right. Um, and the, the reason that we got all of these releases over the past couple of years, especially in 2020 and 2021, was because they were trying to clean house of all of those indie stars. Yep. yep. You would be hard set to find anyone left in the WWE who was not born and raised in the system. Right. right. Now, now, there, there are, are some that are obvious, obvious like, like Walter, Walter, like Riddle, like, like Tommaso Ciampa, Ciampa, like, um, oh, God, oh God there was one right off the top of my head, and I'm drawing a horrible blank. Like uh, Roxanne Perez, Perez, a lot of these uh, superstars, superstars may be indie darlings, darlings mm-hmm. but, but they, they aren't super, super experienced with right. it other, other than, than maybe Walter and Tommaso. Right. So, so they, they have, have the, the opportunity, opportunity to really develop, develop a new character. character. And, and even then, the WWE has a system in a way of, of changing names, for example, telling people to lose weight to look more presentable on television. Right. right. And obviously I'm speaking about Gunther, but there are other superstars who are, if, if you're willing to change for the E, then the E will keep you around. Right. And that's that's why you're not getting a lot of backlash anymore about uh, Pete Dunne becoming Butch. Right. Like, like, there wasn't an issue with it. It was about the presentation that they're trying to go for. And right. with this clarity, now we can kind of see the direction WWE is 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 trying to build their reputation off of presentation over flippy shit. Right. And I think that that is what Alex Hammerstone and many other people have been talking about for a long time. And that's what we've been talking about for a long time, too. Right. right. There we, we've talked about the fact that WWE is not looking for wrestlers anymore. Right. right. Now, now, there, there are, are some wrestlers. Now, now we're, we're not trying to discourage anybody from chasing their dream on being in the E, but your expectations are going to be marketing based and more of a map based wrestling right. based, other than maybe some names. But the issue is, is that like Ricochet, he was already marketable to a crowd, so that's why he can still do it. But, but they're, they're not looking, looking for, like, like doing a hundred million flips, right. doing a hundred million moves if you can't market yourself. Right. And let's contrast the ease direction here to, well, they have this one, which I think is also right. a good one. And, and I saw this, I'm like, this is an interesting and, dynamic. And, and here's my theory about NXT UK, because NXT UK is undergoing a lot of changes as well. Yep. And... I don't think that people realize it because NXT UK is not very prominently featured on pretty much anything. Like it was, it was a hard, it was hard for them to get going because they started to really pick up the momentum right before the pandemic right. hit, and they are in England, and it took them a lot longer to get out of it. But let's talk about NXT UK's future. I, it's hard because I don't know if NXT UK has a lot of a future. I don't think so um, because. Basically, what they were trying to do originally was NXT being in different territories right. and having this black and gold feature. This feature is going to be gone. Right. And it's unfortunate to tell you, unless they want to do a total refresh, rebrand to this presentation. But the problem is, is that now you're going to be running into a different style of wrestling, right. which was British Strong style. Right. Um, they might do something different with, like, the black and gold in general and maybe make it look a little bit better. But I think overall the wrestling is yeah. going to be very much the same. And I, and I want to get your opinion on this, too, because I noticed something else that is, that is developing um, and I saw this most prominently with, uh, with um, uh, uh, oh, God, what's her name? Blair Davenport. Or uh, uh, Bea Presley. Yeah. Um, she is undergoing a character change right yep. now. She is becoming a lot more of a character than she was in the past, especially on the indies. Right. right. Um, I think that the direction that WWE wants to go is that if, if, if Priestley or Davenport wants to stay in the WWE long term. I don't see her being in NXT UK for too much longer. I see nope. her going to NXT 2.0. Yep. I think what they're trying to do with this 
is they are trying to resuscitate as many characters from NXT UK as they can to repackage them and then to encourage them to move over to NXT 2.0. Right. right. I think that by the end of the year, NXT UK as a brand is going to be dead. You saw, well, look at Trent Seven, Trent Seven, Trent Seven turn heel. Right. right. And, and it's, it's like, like, what is he going, going to be doing, doing now? now? Here... And, and also, also, I think you brought up another thing, thing is character base. You, you don't, don't have to do a wacky, wacky silly character no. if it's not you. Just take what is given to you and crank it up to 11. But, but, the, but the point I'm trying to make is that NXT UK is developing – Developing characters essentially because yeah. because um, look at Jordan Devlin. Jordan right. Devlin went from he's debuting in NXT UK here in a minute, or uh, not NXT UK, uh, NXT 2.0 here in a but, minute. But but he is he is more of a character than he was even like yeah. last year, even oh. two years ago. Most certainly. Um, that's why a kid didn't work. That's why we haven't seen Nathan Fraser on television in a while right. because, because his character is just not working for the WWE system. They got to do something different with him. Right. Um, and yeah, NXT UK as a brand is is going by the wayside. Now, they're utilizing NXT UK right now as a place for people to go and find that character to introduce them to a larger audience in right. NXT 2.0. But as a brand, it's NXT... It's a farm system to the farm system. Right. But as a brand, NXT UK, what we have, all the stuff that we have seen, you know, like they haven't done much to the brand and I think that's because I think that their long-term vision is to no longer have this brand. Right. right. Uh, let's talk about Tony Khan with the opposite of right. more wrestling and, and or more flippy based. Right, and let's talk about the, I guess, the opposite side of the story here. Because in parallel to WWE's farm system, it's becoming abundantly clear to me that Tony Khan is also working on the, the development of his own farming system. Mm -hmm. um, I think that with Dark and Dark Elevation, I don't see those two brands surviving too much longer either. I see those being consolidated into maybe a separate roster that is Ring of Honor. Well, how, <coughs> excuse me. How they do Dark and Dark Elevation is to expose indie wrestlers right. who want to get a booking but not necessarily be within the plans yet. It's right. more about how do how does the live reaction fans respond to these individuals. Right. But they're not getting a lot of views. They're not getting a lot of ratings. They're, on, they're, on, they're YouTube shows right. that, that don't do well. Well, no, the problem is is that you're looking at a YouTube, a YouTube show and a show that is on television are two totally different things. And, and I don't think AEW gets that. Right. There's a different presentation. There's a different quality expectation. And when you as a company that's trying to go after the biggest promotion you don't do that with a youtube show right you just don't right and and i think that the point i'm trying to get is is that there are these two parallel i guess paths that are being presented right and i think it depends on what your value system is as a wrestler, right. right? Are you are you a colorful character that is easily moldable that that can become somebody different and turn that personality up to a hundred? Then E might then be the, the way to go, right? Because you'll have more opportunities to develop yourself, and they have the resources to give you a character. Now, say you're not necessarily the biggest character in the world, or maybe you want more of a balance but you have a special set of skills that there are, there allow are you to highlight those in a way that is appreciated. There are plenty of other companies. Right. It's not just A or B anymore. Right. And it's like, look at Matt Cardona. He doesn't wrestle for AEW, and he doesn't wrestle for WWE, right. and yet he's one of the most popular acts in wrestling. Right. He's a mix of that character-based guy right. and the wrestling-based guy that we know that he is. Right. He's a great example of that. It's not just A or B anymore. You right. can go to Impact, NWA. You can go to these places but now. What I'm talking about these, is... These are the big boys. Right. What I'm talking about is a fully developed system. Right. I think that with, with some sort of renewed... I don't really know what Tony Khan's interest in Ring of Honor as a brand is. But we're seeing more shows from it, though. We're, we're seeing some more shows. And what I think is going to happen, because he is bringing a lot of indie wrestlers into Ring of Honor. Yep. He is doing all of that stuff. I think what he's trying to do is to do something very similar to what is being done with Elevation, Dark Elevation and Dark. Right. right. Is that he is, I, I think, like I said, I think that he is going to replace those internet shows with a product like Ring of Honor because it is a more attractive 
um, a product, and I think that it, it could possibly get some television. Right. right. And it, it, it already has history of television. Exactly. And they can do it for maybe even a cheaper price. Exactly. At, maybe not necessarily a big one, maybe not a TBS or a TNT-esque uh, But But maybe highlight. one of their smaller properties. Right. Um, and to, and, and to um, I guess, increase that production quality, to have the history there, to have the titles there. And I think that's part of the reason why it's already it's already established. Right. It's that's already there. It's Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor is already a name yeah. brand that a lot of indie people really wanted to go to. Right. That are they're familiar with it. Right. And I think that that is a great attraction point for indie people who want to highlight those indie moves and it's, and on it's, a bigger stage. Right. And it's not just you know the indie people that we don't know. Maybe it's a person that's not on television. Uh, at um, AEW right. level, like, like what they're doing with Cage and Khan and all of right. them, it's, it's a great place for them. Then you have credibility right there. Right. But, but then you also have maybe people recovering from an injury who need to knock the ring rust off, maybe not as much of a fast pace right. and, uh, focus. Right. And I can see a lot of people from AEW uh, moving, being moved to the Ring of Honor brand maybe on a more full-time basis as well. Yep, I see that too. Um, and I, I think that that's pretty much what it's going to be. Ring of Honor is going to turn into what I NXT hope, Black and Gold was. I really hope so. Yeah. I think that would just be a wonderful mix of the two. And you're right, it would be a brand that's already recognized with titles that are already established and maybe have a wrestling school, maybe like more of a polish yeah. sort of wrestling school thing. So, you know, uh, maybe not necessarily gatekeep, but say how many years of experience within other circuits do you have? Right. Can we see some matches from you right. instead of fresh young people? Right. And I think that would be a great sort of addition to not only polish the wrestling for television, but maybe even polish characters right. to maybe even go to the E. And that's and that's that's kind of this this what? could be the NXT UK for AEW. Maybe right. NXT UK will convert to that polish of both on a smaller stage with maybe more of a crowd that likes more of the map base. So it's not as right. the expectations are maybe not lower but different. Right. Does that make sense? So yeah, I think that makes and, sense. And so I, like I said, I think I think that we're gonna try and get as much consolidation as possible because people, because that's just the way the industry is going yep. right now. Um, consolidation and and just trying to find their voices. And I think that um, if if my theory comes to fruition, great. If not, then whatever. But right. um, I think it's something interesting to consider. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, uh, when wh are we gonna do? Are you good? I'm I'm good. That's all okay. I've got. Great. Uh, let me let us know what you think about these. What do you think are the long term plans of these brands on what they're thinking of, and what do you think of WWE's stance now comparison to AEW's? We want to hear from you in the comments wherever you are listening or watching this. So when we come back, we're gonna be talking about cash in prizes of professional wrestling and the history of such.